to Mother Care. Always a pleasure and privilege bringing the show to you every single week. My name is Marion and I'm so glad you kept the faith and you've tuned into the show. Today's episode is quite interesting. For me, bittersweet memories because, uh, well, it affected me personally, but I really would love to get more education on today's topic. So I'm excited on one hand and I'm also sad on the other hand. You get to understand what I'm talking about much later on the show. Welcome back. It's still Mother Care, and that's our feature documentary. Now you understand what we're talking about today. It's sickle cell disorder. Now, if you were a mom out there and you had a child that had this, how would you cope? What kind of challenges are moms facing when it comes to sickle cell disorder? We went to the streets and we found out what real moms had to say about this very real issue. Sickle cell anemia, to the best of my knowledge, is a blood-related disease or sickness whereby a couple of AS, AS, marry themselves. Obviously, one of their children, I think the ratio is one out of four kids. One, the lucky one, we have that SS. Initially, I know it's, a, it's one of those deadly diseases, but I thank God, because one of my younger sister is an SS, and to the glory of God, whenever she has crisis, we rush out to the hospital, but I thank God for the government hospital. As far as I know, sickle cell anemia is not good because it keeps not only the child uncomfortable, but the parents too. Welcome back. It's still Mother Care. So today we're doing, uh, talking about sickle cell disorder. Now this for me is, um, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the education, but it brings up memories because there was someone I was so close to. And you know how you feel like it's all over the past that stage. She was like a big sister and a, a mentor to me. And she was already like 45. And well, people told me then that if you pass 40, maybe I get educated today, you know, you had crossed the whole danger zone. And it was just a shock to lose her. So honestly, today I'm trying to be, to smile, but it just brings memories that is so sad. But I'm willing to be educated and inspired by my guest. I'll start with Dr. Aki Odubiton, who is a medical literacy expert. Now, he's a doctor. But... He's also someone who educates people on all the big medical jargon we hear every day. It's a great pleasure to have you on the show, Doctor. Thank you very much. And then I have Maureen Wachi. She is a sickle cell advocate and a survivor. I start with advocate because she's passionate about this. I don't want to attack her just a survivor. She's so much more than that. Maureen, it's a pleasure to have you on the I'm show. I'm happy to be here. Okay, let me start with, I don't even know who to start with. Let me start with Dr. Aki first. Uh, okay. Sickle cell. Now, growing up, um, I was in a boarding school where, you know, first of all, Maury, <laughs> so I pass you on the street. I'm not going to think like you are in this situation at all <laughs> because the, the idea and the picture we have in our minds about sickle cell survivors or people that have the, the disorder is like they're sickly all the time, they're sad all the time. And then I, I meet her this today and I'm like, okay. And she's glowing. She's, she's glowing. glowing. I'm glowing. like, you know, okay. <laughs> we don't tell, I, I, I always say, okay, Elite doesn't tell her age, but let me just tell you one thing. She's not as young as you think. <laughs> she looks like she's 21. Add like a lot more and she's that okay mm. but you look so amazing so Thank that's the you. first i'm going to say Thank that you. you just you just put a smile on my face that this is not the end definitely well let me start with dr akin explain for us because that's that's what you're good at explaining the whole jargon this issue of sickle cell what exactly for those who don't understand what's about what's sickle cell disorder okay so two things first of all is that the the appearance, that classical appearance yeah. that we mentally associate mm -hmm. with, sick, with people with sickle cell disorder mm -hmm. is actually a build-up of many crises oh, they have had God. in oh. their younger years okay. when their physical development was happening. Okay. So the more crises 
a baby, a child has, the more likely they are to be in adulthood, to look like oh. a sickle cell patient, patient as, it, as it were. As okay. it were. Let's talk about sickle cell disorder for a bit. Um, we all have blood mm. flowing in our veins. Our blood, if you're like me and everyone else mm. here, is red. Mm. Now, blood has cells in it. So the blood has red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. The red blood cells have the function of carrying oxygen around the body. So when you breathe in mm. and you breathe out, the air that you breathe in has oxygen inside. Okay. That oxygen is captured by the red blood cells okay. and supplies energy across oh, and around the body. Okay. But in a few people, the red blood cells do not work optimally. Oh. They do not work very well. Okay. The reason they don't work very well is because there's something in the red blood cells called hemoglobin. Mm. In people who have what we call the sickle cell disorder, their hemoglobin is not structured properly. Oh. And so, at certain conditions, in certain environments, when exposed to certain things, their red blood cells change in shape into what we call, into the shape we call the, the sickle. sickle. Okay. Yes, so normally a red blood cell is like a plate, you know, like mm. a plate, but you mm. know, like a frisbee. Don't I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yes, but when people have sickle cell gene, the gene, think of the gene as an architectural drawing, mm. and then the red blood cell as the building. Okay. So if there's a problem with the architectural drawing, uh -huh. there will be a problem the building, with the building. Yeah. Exactly. So people who have the sickle cell disorder gene mm -hmm. have buildings that are not structurally sound. Okay. So their red blood cells are not the way it should be. So yeah, under certain yeah. conditions, the red blood cells sickle. Right. And that can cause a lot of problems. It can cause problems that start from things like anemia to things that, which is where there's not enough blood in the person's body. Mm -hmm. Because the blood cells that are, can actually work when you breathe in and out mm -hmm. are fewer in number. And that can cause a lot of things. So sometimes, because they are sickle-shaped, they can go and clog the blood vessels oh. so that blood supply to a certain part of the body will not be good and optimal. So it causes bone problems. It can cause brain problems. It can cause problems with the amount of blood available and functional. Mm -hmm. And a whole lot of health things that we generally term under the tag crisis. Crisis. Some five decades, five, six, seven decades ago, um, the sickle cell disorder was a death sentence. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it had other names. Things like Obanje, mm -hmm. Abiku, yeah. the witches in the village, and what have you. You know, and, but it was, it was all a result of ignorance. Mm -hmm. We didn't quite know. We didn't quite understand. But thankfully, medical research, medical understanding, medical literacy mm -hmm. has filtered down through the years and has gotten to the people it matters most, most which are the parents, mm -hmm. particularly in the context of the sickle cell disease. Now, there are many things that could be trigger factors for the different kinds of crisis okay. that a child could have. And amongst it is, you know, frying oils, um, some kinds of food, actually. Wow. Yes, yes. So allergies that then trigger crisis, mm -hmm. you know, um, Danda, there's something we call danda. So danda is insect and animal droppings. You know, so people who had pets, for example. Oh. So the kind of fur, you know, so as the cats move around, for example, they leave some fur, dogs, they move, mm -hmm. leave some fur, cockroaches that go around the house. So when you sweep, the, their leavings mm -hmm. also are strong, strong, strong trigger factor for quite a number of people okay. with respect to the sickle cell disease. So frying oils, dust, animal danda, cockroach danda, and lots of these other things tend to be strong trigger factors, which is why parents need to be very aware mm. of the trigger factors, especially for their child, their children. So what then becomes really important is an observant parent. Okay. An observant parent is more empowered to help reduce the incidence and frequency 
of crisis mm. and therefore have better outcomes for their children, children. Oh. medical outcomes that's for so their children. That's, okay, that's very interesting. As um, human beings, it's not really about the disorder. People die every day. Yes, mm -hmm. you could be, people, you could be passing the road and then Okada will just yes, take you away. Yes, people die every day. So they really need to understand the subject matter. Okay. They, un they need to understand the intricacies. They need to be aware. I think when they are more enlightened, I think that's um, hope for people out there. And um, they need to know that the person who is living with sickle cell is not the disorder. Mm. Uh -huh. Aha! First, you're first a human, human being. being. Okay, that's what the yeah. tag. That's not who you are. Yeah, it's not. It's not yeah. who you are. Ah, you are much absolutely. more than that. You're much more than that. Absolutely. So, yeah. That so if so if only they could give a lot of people a chance. There are things I've been told not to do, and I ask. Um, my mom used to have a problem. You ask too many questions. Uh -huh. Yes, the doctor says don't do this. Hey, why not? Why not? I'll try it. As a child, don't swim. Why not? Eh, you could get sick. Okay, no, I'll go swimming. I learned how to swim at the age of seven. Wow. I always go swimming. Um, it really didn't stop me. I've, I've gone mountaineering twice. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. So I, okay, I'm ashamed of myself <laughs> right now. So I, I don't really see. If I tell myself I can do it, then I'll do it. Oh, you are so amazing. You know, I started the show really feeling down about the whole topic because it was personal to me. But I have a smile on my face meeting someone like you because it just it just makes it a whole lot better. Thank you so much, Maureen, for sharing you. So I'm so, so, I'm so happy to meet you. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Aki. Thank you because I now understand what it means to be a medical literacy expert because you break it down to the barest minimum and Everybody can understand. Thank it was a pleasure much. talking with you. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to take a short break. I'm, I don't know why. I'm not smiling. I just, I try to put the smile back like, you know, be normal. <laughs> but I just feel very happy. I feel like there's so much, there's so much more to life than what we assume. And she's a living testimony. Say hi to your other siblings. Okay, yes. I know she has one who is married with kids. Yes, married and with four kids. Four kids. He's, he's going on 43. Can you imagine? And you have a 41 year old too? Yes. Wow. Wow. Okay, so. <laughs> and she's, look, I don't even know what you men are doing out there. Okay, but that's, that's dating for another day. Come Don't to my site, dating.com, and I'll give you details. Yeah. Okay, we'll take a short break. When we come back, I've got our doc and call. His moments with doctors. Uh, for all of you who've been sending all your questions, it's just a very short break, and then we'll answer all of them. It's still Mother Care. Stay with us. Foundation has been properly registered, but today we bring it out to the public, and uh, it is that uh, as many people as are here will go forth even from today to support this foundation. We intend to uh, collect money to buy medical equipment, uh, some of the types that are not common in the country. So one of our objectives is to spread the word as far as possible, also to procure material that will assist in alleviating this condition. We also would like to support research. We have a sickle cell or a patient, a person that is a carrier who marries another carrier. Each pregnancy has a one in four chance that that child will be a sickle cell. Sometimes we get mixed up and say if we have four children, one in four is likely that it's not one in four. The risk is with each pregnancy. I'm um, also one of the sickle cell patients. I'm HC by genotype because for sickle cell disease, we have different uh, variants of sickle cell disease. We have the SS, those are SS, those are SC, those are SD, SE. So I come from a family of, of three children. I'm the first, myself and my twin sister, we are the first. Then we have a younger brother. 
but the three of us are Paul SC. And here I am today, by the grace of God, I'm a medical doctor, my twin sister is an engineer, and my younger brother is also an engineer. is pretty challenging, especially with the crisis. Uh, that's the pain that we experience. Um, people have found it difficult to describe. Some describe it as somebody continuously stabbing you with a knife. Some others describe it as somebody bashing you several times and putting you up. But it's excruciating. It's not headache pain. It's not labor pain. You will continue as the chairman, as, as the chairman of the board of trustees has told us to sell this idea to as many people, so many companies and foundations that will help in creating to this foundation. God bless you. Good to have you once again in this episode. It's a promising and interesting one that you will enjoy. We have carefully selected some questions from the numerous questions that you've been sending in, especially those who care to put their name and their location. Please remember, put your name and your location when next you send your questions. And this question goes, please doctor, I'm 12 weeks pregnant or having stomach pains immediately I eat and always very weak. What should I do? First of all, congratulations for this new life you are about to bring to this world. Yes, what you are having are simply early pregnancy symptoms. And this is going to continue for a while. Good enough, you are already 12 weeks. In another few weeks, you will feel much better. But there are other challenges that would come. And that is what this program is actually made for. Now, these are little advice for you. Eat little at a time. You may decide to eat four, five, six times a day, but little at a time. When you do that, you discover that the pain you feel in your stomach will reduce. And at the same time, avoid oily foods. Food that do not have too much oil, dry food. Keep them dry as quickly as possible. And remember, you did this to your mother and your baby is doing it to you. And, if, and of course, if it's a baby girl, she will pass through the same thing. They are physiological, they are normal. And every woman wants to feel just as you are feeling now. Once again, congrats and the very best to you. Say hello, doctor. My name is Debbie. I have gotten the number of children I and my husband needed. And I went for a family planning for implants. And since I put it, I have been getting so fat, especially my stomach. And it's very big that my husband is complaining about it. Doctor, what will I do? Please let me know. Debbie, congratulations for completing your family size and for appreciating that fact that you have had a number you can care for. That is a very good one. And I think our mothers are listening. It's not about having so many and we cannot care for them. And for also accepting one of the methods of planning your family is very good of you, Debbie. But however, it seems that the one you have chosen, an implant, most probably the one they put here or here, and it's making you add weight. You would like to go for another one if your husband is complaining that, oh, you are too fat. So you get it removed, then you now discuss again with your health provider. There are other options. Maybe you should try other options that do not have the same mechanism of action with the one you currently are putting on. And I'm sure you'll be very comfortable for that one. We have other methods like the IUD. IUD is the one you put through the vagina and is attached to the cervix. That most likely will not uh, make you add weight and is as effective as the one you currently you are wearing now. So please go do that and you will be happy that you did. Hello, Doc. Please, my baby died in my womb February 1st, 2018, and I want to get pregnant again as soon as possible. Please advise me, is there anything I need to do? <clears throat> Very sorry that that's happened. We do not know how many weeks you 
that baby was, we don't know. But however, it's, uh, it's sad to hear that. But however, on the issue of you getting pregnant as quickly as possible, it is what your physiology will determine. How fast you return to your hormonal balance. How fast your meses come back to you. How fast your body recovers and is ready to take another pregnancy. Those things will be determined by your body, not you taking anything. And usually, you remember that after delivery, in the next six weeks, there are some discharges you are going to have. Those have to pass. That is what they call the uh, uh, postpartum period, the prepara period, will have to pass. And then your system will gradually come back to what it should be. And once the body is ready for pregnancy, you need not be told. It will come. And at this time, God will keep it for you. This question too is uh, pregnancy related and it says, if you are pregnant and um, scan was done and the result shows that your baby is big, what do you take to reduce the baby fat? Uh, your name is not here. It's a very interesting question. But however, if you are listening right now, don't do anything. Because the size of your baby has been determined. And your baby looks like somebody. If not you, your mother, or, or your husband rather, and somebody in the family tree. So why would you want to reduce the size? Would you not go and harm the baby simply because you want to remove the size? Let me tell you that it's not about giving birth to a baby. You must have taken herbs or other medication that affect the development of this baby, the brain, and the baby grows up and is difficult to, to learn, have difficulties in some other aspect of the baby's life just because you want to reduce the size? No. Let the baby be its size that it has been made to become and allow the baby to develop appropriately instead of distorting it. And if I ask you to stop eating, for instance, would that not, would that not lead you to, to get to have anemia? And when you have anemia, it affects your baby. It affects your own health. So remember, the size of your baby has been determined and allow it to be so. Thank you for your question, Do. And please, when next you send in your question, your name and location is very important. This one comes in from Edo State, precisely in Benin City, Edithin. It says, can a woman who has still birth be pregnant? Or why not? The woman can still be pregnant at the appropriate time. Remember that the stillbirth simply means he gave birth and the baby is not alive. So it, it will not stop the woman from getting pregnant subsequently. Only that we want to find out why did the woman have a stillbirth? Was it a fresh stillbirth? Was it a macerated steel birth? We want to find out what happened. Why was it a steel birth? Was it that the labor was prolonged or something was suggested that, oh, either you or the woman, your, your wife did not accept, especially in, in terms of mode of delivery? Was that a problem? Those are the things that should be found out before you embark on another pregnancy. When you do that, you'll be healthy, your wife will be healthy. Everyone around you will be healthy. In fact, the community will be healthy and the country will be healthy. Because that, this program is actually meant for you to be healthy, to educate you on how you can go about your health. Please keep sending in the questions and we will always make an attempt to give answers to them.
And that's been the show today. I do hope you had enough information and education on sickle cell disorder on the show today because I learned so much. And I still have a smile on my face because, oh, our guest, Maureen, she's just an amazing young woman. I, I, I see a future of limitless possibilities for her. So if you're out there, you, have, you need some clarification or more information on this topic or anything at all please send us a mail a tweet at us all our information are on the screen right now would love to hear from you for all those who had uh, questions on moments with the doctor thank you for sending it in if we haven't gotten to your question not to worry next week <laughs> we will definitely get to your question and that means next week i'll be back on the same station same time my name is marion to all the moms out there being a mom best job in the world thanks for watching